So about a week ago, we posted a strategy here on our channel in regards to a very simple but very effective daunting channel strategy incorporating a couple of other indicators as added confluence. And a lot of people enjoyed it, the fact that not only was it profitable, but also very easy to incorporate. But as a result, a lot of people were also asking us what the difference was between the Chain channel strategy and using Bollinger Bands, because although they do look similar, they are also very different. So we figured let's do a strategy video tutorial video using Bollinger Bands, and that way you can compare the two and see which one is best for you. So for those of you who haven't seen our previous update in regards to the Chain channel strategy, I'll leave the link down below in the video description. But for today, guys, we're going to share with you a very simple but very effective effective Bollinger Band strategy incorporating a couple of other indicators as added confluence to help you find profitable trading positions. Now with this strategy, it's going to be very easy to follow. So even if you're new to trading, looking for, you know, simple strategies to incorporate into your trading, this is something you're going to truly enjoy. And we're going to explain everything that you need in this video. So if that sounds good to you, ladies and gentlemen, smash the like button. And if you're new to the channel, make sure that you subscribe and turn on notifications that way you miss out on any of our future updates. And as a friendly reminder, for those of you who are new to trading or struggling in your trading, don't forget guys that we have an amazing trading community where you get to not only have access to simple and easy education so that way you can improve and enhance your trading skills, but also access to amazing tools such as signals and scanners that you can copy and profit trades from and so much more guys. So I'll leave all that information down below in the video description. It's highly worth it guys. But without further ado, let's roll the footage and let's get started. All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Paul Casado. Thank you guys for tuning in for this a brand new update. As we go through this tutorial video, guys, like I said, we're going to go through everything that you need so that we can incorporate this onto your trading as well. But if you do have any questions, concerns, need help with anything, feel free, guys, to drop a comment down below, or you can also email me directly anytime, and I'll be more than happy to help. And remember that if this is the first time that you're going to be incorporating this type of strategy, make sure that you thoroughly backtest this onto a demo account. Now, as a quick reference, if you look at the links down below in the video description, I do provide you with a link to my recommended broker, which provides you not only reliability for your trading, but also very low spreads. And they provide free demo accounts. So that way you can back test not only this strategy, but any other strategy you come across in your trading venture. So just to give you a little bit of a background, okay? Um, last week, like I said, we did a strategy based on the Dong Chain channel, which looks like this. However, for today, we're going to be talking about a strategy using Bollinger Bands. So as you can see, they do look very similar. However, there are different ways to use this. So that's what we're going to be teaching you today, guys, is how to use this strategy. All right. So first, what I'll do is go over some examples of how to use this in a bearish market. And then I'll show you some examples on how to use this in a bullish market. Okay. And what we want to do is first, we want to identify what trend we are in. And this is very important, guys, because the trend that you are in, whether it's bullish or bearish, is going to determine what types of trades you are going to be looking for. You're going to be looking for buy trades or sell trades. Now, in this case, we're in a bearish market, so we are only looking for sell trades. Therefore, what we want to do is look for points in the market that reach the upper level of our Bollinger Bands. Now, granted, we're not going to just rely on the Bollinger Bands. We do have to incorporate some other factors as well, which we will also go over. So bear with us. But as you can see here, guys, we have here in the market, we have price coming up to these upper levels of the Bollinger Bands here. And we also see that here as well. Now, what most people tend to talk about in terms of using Bollinger Bands is that once price reaches an upper or lower level, you're supposed to go for a buy or sell trade. But just relying on upper and lower levels of the Bollinger Bands is not advised. And what happens is if you just rely on these two factors alone, you're going to end up having a lot of mixed results and chances are you're going to put your money at risk. So we need to add other levels of confluence as well. So one other indicator I would recommend using with this strategy is the stochastics oscillator. Okay. Now the stochastics oscillator is what's going to give us levels of the market that are overbought. All right, means that we're going to be looking for sell trades or oversold levels of the market, which we're going to be looking for buy trades. So in this example, since we are in a bearish market looking for sell trades, we are only focusing on the top level of the stochastics. All right. Now, as you can see here, ladies and gentlemen, 
we have levels of overbought conditions of our stochastics and we can see that market is breaching the upper levels of the Bollinger Bands. Now you'll notice that we have breaches up here and up here. Okay, so I know that for some people that might be confusing, well, how do we know which is the opportune moment to enter a trade? Because as you can see, not only do we have breach of our Bollinger Band, but we also have oversold levels of our stochastics. So just by those two concepts alone, you would be, you would assume, okay, let's enter for a sell trade here. But as you can see, price continue to go back up. So this brings me to my next factor of this strategy. We are using not only Bollinger Bands and Stochastics to help us find our trade entries, but we also have to combine this with structure, right? With your analysis of the markets. What we see here is a minor level of consolidation for the Euro USD up until price keep up to this level of previous support, which then turned into resistance. So most likely the reason why price didn't really do anything in terms of heading in a downward trajectory, even though we had overbought conditions of our stochastics and breakout of our upper bulge bin is because price was not reacting off of any key levels in the market, not up until it reached this level over here. So this is why I always say, ladies and gentlemen, in many of my strategy videos to never just rely on indicators and strategies for placing your trades. You need to combine this with your analysis. It doesn't matter what strategy you're using or what indicator you're using. These are two concepts that you need to combine it together. All right. And if you need help with this, guys, don't worry. I'll get more into that later on at the end. End of this video. But as we can see, we have price in a level of structure. Okay. We also see breach of the upper level of our Bollinger Bands. We also have oversold conditions of our stochastics. This would be an ideal area to enter for a sell trade, especially when we see this downward and crossover momentum of our stochastics, which occurred around this area here in the market. Now, generally speaking, when it comes to where we're setting our stop losses and take profit levels, you obviously want to set these levels at points of structure, so in highs and sling lows. And in terms of Every risk reward ratio. This is honestly subjective depending on your trading plan and risk management. Personally, guys, I like to target a minimum one to one or a one to two, but of course, that is subjective depending on what you're trading with and of course your risk management parameters. But for stop loss, we would definitely want to put this a little bit beyond this swing high level, beyond this level of structure. Okay. And our target and our take profit again would be a one to two risk reward ratio. So if we're risking about 25 pips, we're going to be targeting a minimum of uh, 50 pips, which we're actually at current price. And as you can see, guys, this would have been a winning trade. All right. Now, again, guys, if you have any questions as we're going through this tutorial, I do encourage you watch this to the end. And of course, drop any comments down below or message me directly anytime. And again, I'll be more than happy to help. But we also have a bit of a trading opportunity here as well, where price came up to the upper level of our Bollinger Bands. And we also have fully oversold cross down and crossover and downward momentum of our stochastics. Okay. So in this scenario, we would enter here after price action, stop loss beyond this region of resistance resistance for about 30 pips. And again, targeting a one to two, we would have capitalized 60 pips profit at this point, as you can see here. Now, I do also want to point out one thing, guys, let me just move this over here. Okay, this was a winning trade in this example as well. But let's say that you had missed this opportunity, right? Let's say that you missed this point where price came up, reached up a level of our Bollinger Band, but we do have another opportunity here as well. And the reason why I want to point this out, guys, is because not only does this give us confluence between breach of the upper level of our Bollinger Bands, our stochastics isn't fully in oversold, uh, excuse me, overbought territory. However, what we are looking at here is a bit of a market structure pattern referred to as a double top, also referred to as an M pattern. So if we had missed this first entry, identifying this pattern will help you determine that price is most likely going to continue further down during this bearish market. All right. So there are two things that you can have done here based on what we see here with this end pattern. We could have taken an entry here. All right. At the close of this bearish candle and again, stop loss beyond the level of structure for 20 pips targeting one to two for about 40 pips. What you could have also done because this is an end pattern is wait for price to break the neckline. All right. The neckline, which is at this level, okay, which what was previously resistance has turned into support. Once we see that price has broken the neckline of this M pattern, this could have been our entry point. And you could have taken this trade further down for a maximum of 50, 50 plus pips. All right. So, so far, guys, those are some examples on how to use this strategy in a bearish market. But now we're going to get into bullish market territory and also provide you with some additional insight. So let's get to it. 
All right, guys, so now that we're looking at bullish market, we are at current price of the Euro USD. So because we're in a bullish market, we're only looking for buy trades. Therefore, there are two areas that we want to focus on. In terms of the Bollinger Bands, we want to look at the lower levels. And for the stochastics, we want to look at the lower level or the oversold positions of the stochastics, okay? And this is where I'm going to get into a little bit more detail. And I did this on purpose because for those of you who are still watching this video, um, you know, I want to give you guys a little bit more because you're still here. You're still watching. You're still paying attention. So I really want to thank you guys. And of course, smash the like button if you like what you are seeing so far. But this is where I'm going to get into some juicy stuff for identifying profitable trade entries based on everything that we've gone over so far. So as you can see, we have a lower level breach of the Bollinger Band based on price. OK, and looking at our stochastics, we can see that we are in fully oversold territory with cross upward crossover and upward momentum. All right. So just looking at what we see here. Right. And I'm, like I said, I'm going to get into some juicy stuff in just a few moments. But just based on what we see here, this would have been a profitable trade entering at the close uh, at the close of this bearish uh, bullish candle stop loss beyond this level of support. All right. And targeting a minimum one to two. This would have been a profitable trade for obviously 40 pips. We could have taken this even further if we wanted to, if we were trailing our stop losses and taking partials along the way. But one other thing I want to share with you as well is that we can also see here that we have a W pattern. So very similar to the M pattern that we went over earlier. Here we have a W pattern. So just in case if you had missed this opportunity and we see that, you know, in this case, using the replay feature, that price has come up, right? And then it starts to, you know, retrace a little bit. OK, you'll notice that it actually doesn't fully breach the lower level of our Bollinger Bands. But the reason why that this is also an opportune moment for you to enter a trade is because we can see that our stochastics, all right, is fully oversold. Not only that, but we are also getting that upward momentum and crossover activity. So this also indicates that price is being pushed back up from this level of support. But in addition to that, because we have identified this W pattern, OK, what we want to see. All right. If you wanted to give yourself a little bit of extra confluence that price is most likely going to continue upwards, we want to see price breach the neckline of this W pattern, which, as you can see, occurs right over here. OK, it breached a little bit, had a little bit of a retracement, but this would have been ideal for you to enter at this point. Stop loss beyond this pullback here, this level of support for about 36 pips. So if we're still following the one to two risk to reward, we're going to be targeting roughly a 70 pip take profit level. And if we were to let this play out, that our take profit was smashed. But one other thing I want to share with you guys when it comes to your trade entries, as you can see, we are here on the one hour time frame. So let's actually remove all of this. OK, let's remove all this. Let's say we wanted to take this trade entry here. One of the best things that you can do is if you're analyzing from a higher time frame, you want to go down to a smaller time frame to look for an act, a more accurate trade entry and to also find yourself additional added level of confluence that the trade that you're about to take is most likely going to close in your favor. And what I mean by this, guys, is based on the one hour time frame, we went over the fact that we have breach of our lower Bollinger Band, oversold conditions of our stochastics. Let's say that we want to enter somewhere in this area, but we want to make sure we want to get down to a small the time frame what we could do all right we're gonna mark this area okay and now we're gonna go down to the 15 minute okay now what do we see here on the 15 minute all right this is the line that we created on the one hour chart now we're on the 15 we can see that on the 15 minute we have the same level of confluence right we have breach of the lower level of our Bollinger Bands oversold conditions of our stochastics with crossover and upward momentum in addition to that, we also have price action. We have a bullish engulfing candle. So this is a better way, guys, to find your entry points, especially if you are analyzing from a higher time frame. So we are seeing the same conditions on the 15 minute time frame as we did on the one hour time frame. And thereby, guys, by doing this, you're finding yourself more accurate trade entries. So ladies and gentlemen, that is our tutorial video using Bollinger Bands and Stochastics for your Forex trading. Remember, guys, the golden rule of what we went over throughout this video. Not only were we using indicators, but we are also combining our analysis, structure and price action together. You never, ever want to place trades just by relying on indicators and strategies alone. You need to take the time to learn how to trade and analyze charts properly 
effectively. So that way you can use this or any other strategy to your advantage. And remember guys, that if you are new to trading, if you're in the process of learning, or maybe you are struggling in your trading and you want to use these strategies to your advantage, check out the information down below regarding our trading academy, where not only do you get to learn how to trade and improve your trading skills, but also make money at the same time through the amazing features and benefits that we provide, simple and easy to follow education, signals and scanners so that we can copy and copy trades and make profits from and so much more. So I'll leave all that information down below, but I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate and love your support and we'll see you on the next one.